Before the imposing stone walls of Craig Miller Castle graced the landscape, the area on which it now stands held a rich history of its own. Prior to the construction of the castle, the land was gifted to the monks of Holyrood by King David I in the 1100s. The monks owned and worked the land for the next 200 years, before part of it was then granted to the Preston family by King David II in 1342, with the remainder of the land granted to the Prestons by King Robert II in 1374. Over the next 200 years, the Preston family fortified the area. The tower house was constructed in the 1400s and the French-inspired courtyard was constructed around 100 years later. Amid the tumultuous period known as the Rough Wooing, orchestrated by the formidable Henry VIII of England, the English endeavoured to impose their will through military might, a union between the young Mary, Queen of Scots, and Edward, Prince of Wales. A haunting episode unfolded at Craig Miller Castle during this time, as English troops led by the Earl of Hartford left a trail of destruction in their wake culminating in the castle's conflagration on the 8th of May. This harrowing event followed the devastating sack of Edinburgh. In the wake of this fiery turmoil, Sir Simon Preston emerged as a pivotal figure in the history of Craig Miller. He undertook the extensive task of repairing the castle, overseeing the meticulous remodelling of the domestic quarters within its courtyard. Sir Simon's legacy extended beyond the castle's stones. He assumed the role of Lord Provost of Edinburgh for several years, earning recognition as a steadfast supporter of Queen Mary. His loyalty was reciprocated when the Queen appointed him to her Privy Council, an honour that reflected his unwavering dedication to the monarchy during a time of profound upheaval. The castle was designed not only as a defensive fortress, but also as a residence befitting the status of its noble occupants. Throughout the years, the castle witnessed a series of events that reflected the shifting tides of Scottish history. In the 16th century, Craig Miller played host to the infamous Craig Miller Bond, a secret pact among nobles to remove Mary Queen of Scots' husband, Lord Darnley, from the political scene. This pivotal event had far-reaching consequences, shaping the course of Scotland's monarchy. By the 17th century, the castle had transitioned from a military stronghold to a grand country residence, evolving to suit the changing needs and tastes of its inhabitants. As time marched on, the castle's significance began to wane, and by the 18th century, it had fallen into disrepair. In the following years, it changed hands several times and its fortunes ebbed and flowed. The once mighty fortress became a romantic ruin, captivating the imagination of poets, writers and travellers who wandered through its echoing halls. Today, Craig Miller Castle stands as a testament to the layers of history that have shaped Scotland's story. With its grand towers, enigmatic hidden chambers and panoramic vistas, Craig Miller evokes a palpable sense of awe and mystery. These very features that command our fascination also serve as the haunting grounds for spirits that linger from times long past. When the image of a haunted castle forms in your mind, it's likely to be one of broken battlements and ruined towers shrouded in a drifting mist where the moonlight weaves enigmatic shadows through the remnants. That was the scene one night in May 1934, when a couple of locals were out enjoying a late night stroll in the farmer's field surrounding the castle. As they neared the ruins, their attention was suddenly captivated by a distant yet distinct movement. Their eyes strained and torches poised, they directed their beams towards the source of the movement revealing a solitary, shadowy figure gradually approaching the ancient castle's ruins. Suspecting this was another walker, someone they may well have known, they called out to them, but received no recognition in return. As they continued to observe the silent figure, a shiver ran down their spines. Whomever they were observing wasn't walking, they were floating.
watching wide-eyed in amazement, the floating spectre moved through the ruins of the castle and disappeared through one of the many ancient doorways. Feeling as courageous as they were curious, they decided to chase the uncanny visitor into the depths of the castle. But no matter where they looked, there was no one to be seen. The realisation soon hit the men that what they had witnessed wasn't a neighbour, and it wasn't someone of flesh and blood. What they had seen was a spectral apparition. So frightened were they by what they had witnessed, they ran to find help, and when they did, they organised a posse of makeshift ghost hunters to investigate the castle and establish just exactly what they had witnessed. This ad hoc assembly approached the castle ruins with a blend of trepidation and scepticism, each reacting differently to the incredible tale that they had been told. However, the dynamic shifted abruptly as a piercing cry shattered the stillness of the night. Ghost! came the cry from one of the posse. In an instant, a surge of adrenaline propelled the men into motion and they charged through the darkness towards the castle ruins. One of the group had seen a dark, cloaked figure flitting in between the walls of the castle, so pointed to the area where he'd last seen it. Splitting up, they entered the ruins. Torch beams could be seen frantically moving from one area of the castle to the next. The men shone their lights into every corner and searched behind every wall, but found nothing. The figure had simply vanished. Several months drifted by, and the events of that fateful night had begun to recede into the recesses of the witnesses' minds. Yet, as the evening of the 5th of May descended, the memories of that night would resurface with an overwhelming rush. On an evening not too dissimilar to that night a year prior, a spectral figure was again seen floating, only this time it wasn't among the stone walls and eerie ruins of the castle. This time, it was on a road leading up to the castle. On this occasion, the witness had a clearer and closer view of the apparition, describing it as wearing a long dark blue hooded cloak with a mass of tangled black hair which falls over the forehead, while heavy riding boots with spurs adorned the spooky figure's feet. As the ethereal presence gracefully glided along the densely forested road, they stood there in sheer astonishment, captivated by the inexplicable sight before them. Slowly, the figure turned its head, locking its gaze upon them with malevolent eyes that seemed to gleam menacingly at the sight of a mere mortal's approach. Prompted by this encounter, a swift response ensued as a group of brave locals initiated a fresh ghost hunt. A member of the posse did claim to see the spirit again, describing a shadowy figure that seemed to navigate the ruins. However, despite their determined efforts, their search yielded nothing. Again, the figure managed to evade capture. This appears to be the last official reported sighting of the ghost with spurs. Every castle, with its weathered stones and time-worn corridors, cradles the echoes of the past. Within these ancient walls, tales of gallant knights and star-crossed lovers abound. Craig Miller is no exception to the spectral tradition, and its haunting legacy is anchored by the enigmatic presence of the White Lady. The story begins with Lady Marion, also known as Marion Shaw, a noblewoman ensnared in the throes of forbidden love. In a time when societal norms dictated every aspect of one's life, Lady Marion dared to follow her heart, falling for a man her family vehemently opposed, possibly a humble servant or a commoner. Love, however, cares little for the demands of nobility, and Lady Marion's clandestine affair was eventually uncovered. Her own father, in a heart-wrenching turn of events, felt forced to imprison his own daughter within the cold, stone walls of Craigmiller Castle. There, in the dim confines of a small, desolate chamber, Lady Marion's world shrank to darkness, despair and isolation. As the days turned to weeks and weeks to months, 
Lady Marion's once rosy health withered away. Some believe she succumbed to a broken heart, while others speculate that starvation may have claimed her fragile existence. Regardless of the cause, her tragic end left an indelible mark on the castle's history. Today, the legend of Lady Marion lives on in the form of the White Lady, a spectre of ethereal beauty draped in pure white. Her apparition has been cited by numerous witnesses and castle visitors, who have reported eerie encounters within Craig Miller's ancient halls and sprawling grounds. It's said that her mournful cries still resonate in the silence of the night, echoing her heart's eternal longing. Some even claim to have witnessed her ghostly form near the very chamber where she was once imprisoned, forever haunting the castle that was both her sanctuary and her prison. The White Lady of Craig Miller Castle serves as a poignant reminder that love, even in its most forbidden form, can transcend time and death, leaving an enduring legacy of longing and sorrow within the castle's storied walls. As we conclude our haunting journey through the ancient corridors of Craig Miller, the enduring mysteries of Lady Marion and the enigmatic floating entity in the blue cloak linger in the air. These spectral echoes from the past remind us that history is not merely etched in stone, but often carried in the whispers of restless spirits. Craig Miller stands as a sentinel of time where the past and the present coexist and where love and tragedy have left their indelible mark. Whether you're a believer in the supernatural or a skeptic of the unknown, one cannot deny the eerie allure of this historic fortress. So, as we step back into the realm of the living, let's carry with us the enigma of Craig Miller Castle and the spectral stories that forever haunt its hallowed halls.